Hello and good day. And today we will be talking about the relationship between media and a drug use. To begin with, uh, media and adolescent substance abuse. Um, there have been a lot of um, research tests made in relation to um, how the media impacts the capacity for adolescents to use um, any illicit substance. Um, it has been found that influences for adolescents include their parents and peers, but also the so-called the super peers or the new media, just like the music, television, and the internet. Adolescents spend 8.6 hours a day engaging with electronic media, 1.2 hours a day with non-electronic media, just like the books and also the magazines that we have. Uh, of movies, adolescents tend to watch 93% portray alcohol use and 22% re um, with reference to illicit drugs. On television, alcohol is the number one drug portrayed or substance being portrayed, appearing on 77% of the TV episodes according to to the Office of the National Drug Control Policy. And even in music uh, videos, alcohol shows up every 14 minutes. Each increase of one hour per day of television viewing was actually associated with a 9% average increased um, risk of starting to drink alcohol during the next 18 months. And in another study, each increase of one hour per day of music video viewing was actually associated with a 31% average increased um, risk of starting to drink alcohol during uh, the next 18 months. And that only goes to show that the media also has its influence over drinking and even um, using any uh, illicit or legal substances available in the environment. Um, when it comes to, to smoking, a study of German youth found that the incidence of trying to smoke was associated with increased exposure to movie smoking. In another study, exposure to pro-tobacco um, marketing and media increases the odds of youth holding positive attitudes towards tobacco use and more doubles the odds of initiating smoking. Studies also show a dose response or a cause and effect relationship between music and marijuana, with adolescents significantly more likely to use if exposure is over three hours a day. And this is alarming. It's actually because marijuana contains uh, THC or tetrahydrocannabinol and it is 10 times more to cause psychosis over individuals who are using it compared to shabu or methamphetamine hydrochloride. Um, how does the exposure translate into initiation of use or increased use when one is just watching um, certain advertisements, um, clips from movies, or listening to music, um, adolescents have completely have haven't actually completely formed their own identities, and they're more likely than adults to be in a state of experimenting and modeling behaviors of um, shaping their world based on their observations of the world, and with that, in developing their own identity, the look at their 
uh, they actually look at their peers and uh, their super peers, which are, are the new media, and normalize or incorporate what they see in movies, music, and TV into their real lives. Uh, let's go to the substance use um, disorder in the Philippines or SUD. Um, do not mistakably think that there is another term, but uh, when it comes to addiction, the, um, addiction as a term is commonly used by um, individuals outside of the profession. Uh, when we speak of SUD, this is the clinical term for addiction or synonymously with um, substance abuse. So for the common understanding, uh, when we speak of addiction, it pertains to uh, synonymously to SUD or substance use disorder for the purpose of this um, topic. In 2018, the Dangerous Drugs Board has reported 5,447 admissions from 54 treatment and rehabilitation facilities showing a significant increase of 34.66% from the previous year. Um, if you may also consider uh, the 54 treatment uh, and rehabilitation facilities, they are DOH sanctioned and accredited facilities. And we could say that the number could be more uh, than uh, this digit. Uh, present here or digits pre present here because not all drug rehabs and um, centers are accredited by um, the Department of Health. So there are um, centers which are operating without the DOH um, accreditation and this number may not be the exact number at all. In 2019, a government data revealed that there were a total of 5,104 drug suspects who died in the anti-drug operations, while 167,135 have been arrested. And um, what's interesting here in uh, our country is that most of the individuals who are hooked up with um, illegal drugs, basically using shabu or methamphetamine hydrochloride, um, the the greatest population of these uh, using individuals are construction workers because they get to um, use illicit substances um, in order for them to be able to be effective at work. And um, in, in the clinical practice, we call it functional use. They use in order for them to function and to do their work. Now, um, you might be able to also observe um, individuals who have been um, attending sessions in the different barangays. Uh, they are the individual uh, surrenderees for uh, the barangay um um, community-based uh, intervention or program and what's sad uh, in, in the picture is that even if they are included in the list and they have been um, religiously attending to these sessions even after completion their names would still be uh, maintained or be remaining in the list of um, people who use drugs um, and the list are, are, are the lists are still with the PNP so it's just quite sad because you are still part of the uh, list even if you have um, completed and attended uh, the sessions required for you to um, to be out of the list supposedly to be motivated to attend and, and to stop using Instead of uh, making it as a motivation, that could be demotivating on the side of people who use drugs. And um, in this picture, you might uh, also be seeing how scared this guy is because um, in, in the previous years, we have been observing rampant um, 
extrajudicial killings uh, in relation to the government's drug war. Um, the substance use disorder or SUD um, or commonly known as addiction, it is defined by ASAM or the American Society for Addic- Addiction uh, Medicine. Um, it is a primary chronic disease of the brain reward, meaning it is a long-term problem of the brain uh, and its reward system um, in relation to motivation, memory, and related circuitry. Dysfunction in these circuits leads to characteristic biological, psychological, social, and spiritual manifestations, and this is reflected in an individual pathologically pursuing reward and or relief by substance use and other behaviors. So what uh, does this um, in- indicate in, in the brain mechanism when a person would be using uh, illicit drugs like marijuana, shabu, um, solvents, and many other um, substances? So, drugs of abuse target the brain's pleasure center. So, drug of abuse increase dopamine in the synapse. So, imagine when a person will be taking in food, the dopamine as a neurotransmitter is actually released in the synapse. And that's why you feel good when you eat, especially when the food is delicious. So, um, when a person uses cocaine, cocaine is a stimulant, um, it actually increases that dopamine level compared to food. And at the same time, why has it become addictive? Or why is it that people become preoccupied in using the substance? It's actually because supposedly in the natural process, the dopamine would be, um, there is a process called reuptake. Now, the dopamine would likely go back to the um, uh, presynaptic neuron, meaning um, the, the dopamine released in the synapse would go back to the neuron to where uh, it was released. But the problem when an individual would be um, using illicit drugs, dopamine would be suspended in the synapse. And that's why people are experiencing it in a form of a high. Uh, The first high is likely what is targeted by these individuals. Now, they want to really experience how it was like to to be on their first high. And uh, we know for a fact that um, that first high would no longer occur. And uh, it would likely be pursued by the individual until um, tolerance would also be present. And later, we would be talking about uh, what uh, tolerance is all about. Um, SUD or addiction, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, it is considered um, as a brain disease since the drugs of abuse have the capacity to alter the brain structures and their functions were in uh, effects are long lasting and uh, they may lead to harmful behaviors um, the three most common substance here in uh, the country are the following marijuana we have shabu or the methamphetamine hydrochloride and MDMA or ecstasy, commonly known as um, ecstasy. Um, we also have problems in relation to um, other substances, which include uh, the cough uh, syrup, which is uh, also abused by uh, Filipinos here in the country. Uh, we also have solvents, um, also abused and sniffed by um, children. Um, we, we might also have been um, observing them uh, using uh, these substances. 
and people who inject drugs or PWID. Um, they use um, certain substances like nubane, fentanyl, and they inject um, drugs uh, on this part of uh, the arm. If you are seeing people who have been uh, uh, having these needle marks on, on this part of the arm, then that could be a, a, an indicator that these individuals are PWIDs. And we have uh, the Talampunay or the uh, Devil or Angel's Trumpet, uh, locally known as Kachobong. And this is also um, used by people uh, in the mountain areas. And this is also very dangerous because it could kill individuals who are using uh, this particular plant. Um, this is basically um, a hallucinogen. Um, alcohol, which is legal in the country. And this is also... Um, alarming because uh, when people would be uh, looking for um, ways to be treated uh, in relation to alcohol dependence, um, alcohol management, withdrawal management per se, is also very hard to um, to perform. It's because uh, when people would undergo treatment in rehabilitation facilities for alcohol, uh, it would cause their um their blood pressure to rise and it would be risking uh their lives no um it, it would actually be putting themselves uh, at risk because they might also um or it might also entail that they would uh be uh, it would cause uh, their lives no uh, when alcohol management or withdrawal management wouldn't also be successful. It may entail that uh, it may entail death on their part. Um, the nomenclature: uh, How do we consider that there is a problem, and and um, what symptoms are we talking about when we speak of the substance use disorder? Um, DSM five. Um, released in 2013 by the American Psychological Association, um, they have indicated that there is a pattern of substance use leading to clinically significant impairment or distress as manifested by at least two of the following. So at least two symptoms out of the 11 occurring within a 12-month period. So the observation time for um, SUD is one year. And it includes the following symptoms. First is the substance is taken in large or larger amounts or over a longer period than was intended. So um, there could be prescribed medications uh, wherein an individual would likely be addicted like um, benzos or benzodiazepines, uh, commonly termed as tranquilizers. And, and they could be serving uh, these individuals uh, for their uh, mental health concerns. But then um, when they would start taking larger doses, then uh, that could be considered as a substance abuse. And that is when the term substance abuse would be um, used. It's because um, there is this larger amount or dose used as... Uh, compared to what was prescribed. Second, there is a persistent desire or unsuccessful efforts to cut down or control substance use. So this entails that the use or the, the usage of the substance has become a compulsion. Um, there is like uh, a tendency for people that they would have a difficulty in uh, stopping themselves from not using the substance. Um, third, there is a great deal of time spent in activities necessary to obtain the substance, to use it and recover from the effects. Okay, so meaning to say, um, the person is no longer 
uh, motivated to go to work, but the motivation is now to obtain the substance. And that's why um, families are complaining that um, uh, their son or daughter are no longer working. Um, they are selling their appliances, their possessions. Um, they would always be out of the house. They would be... Um, they don't know about their whereabouts for uh, two, three days and they would come back uh, behaving differently or they would uh, be sleeping first. No? So um, that could be challenging for uh, the parents, basically, who are struggling uh, with the ill effects of um, the, the family member who has been uh, inflicted with... Uh, the drug problem craving or a strong desire uh, or the urge to use the stimulant so a craving is also observed no um people get to be um excited to be motivated uh, to really uh, use um a stimulant or a substance um there is also recurrent substance use uh, resulting in failures to fulfill major role obligations at work, uh, school, or at home. So, um, if uh, a person who has SUD is a student, then likely um, there is um, tardiness. There is um, the 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 student likely incur um, a number of absences. Uh, and school work would no longer be performed. So likely, uh, these are the indicators of individuals who have um, SUD. And um, there is also continued substance use despite having persistent or recurrent social or interpersonal problems caused or exacerbated by the effects of the substance. Um, let's say, for example, uh, the person has been... Um, warned and uh, may, uh, it may also entail that uh, significant relationships are now given up. Uh, it may actually cause them to have uh, conflicts with other people and still the person would be using the drug or the substance. Important social, occupational, or recreational activities are also given up or reduced because of substance use, like um, family gatherings, um, people or our friends, um, let's say, are, are having reunions and uh, the, the person would no longer be joining uh, these uh, social gatherings because uh, he is preoccupied in, in using uh, the substance. And important uh, gatherings like uh, graduation, uh, family gatherings are also given up. Uh, recurrent substance use in situations in which it is physically hazardous, like uh, for example, it has been uh, noted that uh, the government is very persistent when it comes to their uh, drug war and still, uh, despite that um, hazard, the person is still... Um, continuously um, using the drug or the substance. Uh, it is also continued despite knowledge of having a persistent or recurrent physical or psychological problem. So let's say, for example, uh, the, the person has been diagnosed with a medical problem and still, no, it wouldn't um, deter the person from using or the person has caught a car accidents several times already and still, um, the person wouldn't mind using the substance now tolerance um, tolerance is also another symptom uh, indicated uh, tolerance happens when there is that desire to increase the dosage because uh, the the substance use or the dose um, uh, usually um, the the do the the usual dosage of the person uh, would no longer have its effect like um, when you would say uh, in terms of 
uh, substance use, uh, many people who have been interviewed would say that they started using uh, shabu or uh, methamphetamine hydrochloride um, at a rate of 100 pesos per day. But uh, eventually, uh, they have also reported that it has become 500 pesos per day or 1,000 pesos per day. Uh, and, and that entails tolerance, meaning um, the substance no longer uh, had, has its effect and there is a need for them to uh, increase the dosage in order for them to have the desired effect of the substance. And that is what we call as tolerance. Mm. Uh, when it comes to alcohol, uh, let's say, for example, the first time you sipped alcohol, um, the first glass, no, um, you have become tipsy. Um, and, and then the next time you would be drinking a, a glass of alcohol, um, it would no longer have uh, that effect on you or the same effect on you previously. So, uh, meaning to say, your tolerance level has increased. And that's also the same with uh, stimulants or uh, other um, types of substances. Withdrawal is uh, also an uh, an included symptom, meaning when a per when, when there is sudden cessation uh, of the substance use, um, people are likely to have um, bodily manifestations of withdrawal, and that's why there should be withdrawal management when people come into treatment. Um, for, for most individuals who have been addicted and been using methamphetamine hydrochloride, uh, the management would uh, be focused more on detoxifying them, meaning uh, all, all they do is just to eat and relax for about a week. And there should be um, supplements like vitamin B in order for them to uh, also cope from the different withdrawal symptoms or the bodily symptoms which include uh, fever, headache, um, upset stomach, and, and many bodily uh, discomfort. Um, the, the most dangerous withdrawal symptom for um, addiction is actually depression. And we know for a fact that addiction is a very lonely kind of problem. And still, um, individuals who might actually be admitted for treatment may uh, experience depression and uh, likely um, they become suicidal because uh, most of them don't agree um, for a treatment, especially an inpatient kind of uh, confinement where they get to stay for about um, nine months in treatment or a year. Um, let's go to the major substances. Uh, we have the sedative hypnotic agents. We have behavioral stimulants, narcotic analgesics, hallucinogens, antipsychotic, and also other forms, usually a mixture of um, effects. Uh, let's go to the sedative hypnotic uh, drugs. Um... As I have mentioned earlier, uh, the benzos actually fall under this classification or the benzodiazepines. Um, if you have heard about uh, diazepam uh, with, with the label PAM and LAM, um, I'm not saying all of them, but uh, if you have heard about those uh, medications with those labels, basically, uh, though those are sedative hypno hypnotics. They are considered as uh, tranquilizers or sleeping pills. And uh, with, with the term sedative, meaning uh, it is used to sedate them, to uh, control um, their bodily sensations. And it relaxes the person and, uh, and also have its calming effect. Um, they are often prescribed to older adults for problems including anxiety and difficulty in sleeping. Uh, research has shown that sedative hypnotic medication, even in small doses, is not a safe long-term for anxiety and insomnia. 
especially for people aged 65 and older. So um, what do we mean by this? Um, after given a prescription by uh, your psychiatrist, there should be a follow-up done, uh, meaning you need to con uh, consult and uh, contact your psychiatrist once again after um, the given uh, timetable of your psychiatrist. Like when the psychiatrist would be saying that you need to take this for about three, mo three months or six months, after six months or three months, you need to con contact your psychiatrist once again in order for you not to be dependent on th the substance. Behavioral stimulants. Um, likely, these are uh, from the amphetamine derivatives. Uh, they are called the uppers or speed. They enhance uh, the CNS or the central nervous system. That's why people who are using shabu, um, ecstasy, and uh, many amphetamine derivatives, um, they become alert and they are energetic. Um, people who are using methamphetamine or shabu, um, as you can observe, no, they are very alert. They are also um, experiencing that symptom of automatism. Uh, what do we mean by that? Uh, look, uh, in, in layman's term, we uh, understand it uh, through the term tripping. Uh, when they get to, uh, let's say, um, they get to dismantle things and then... Um, and then repair them once again to their original uh, form. And MDMA or ecstasy is also um, another stimulant or the methylene dioxymethamphetamine, uh, MDMA, which is its clinical term, or ecstasy. Uh, these are party drugs. Uh, if you have um, heard about um, adolescents uh, being reported to uh, to also lose their lives uh, when they were dosed with um, ecstasy. Um, that's actually uh, something uh, that is um, an effect of um, MDMA because it causes your um, heart to pump and, and uh, it causes your body to be alert and your CNS not to be energetic and alert and uh, it likely uh, affects the person's functioning if uh, if it's the first time no, for people to uh, be having the effects of uh, MDMA. Usually MDMA is used um, uh, together with alcohol. No, they are mixing uh, MDMA or these party drugs uh, in the alcohol or the beverage that they are also taking in. Uh, going back to methamphetamine, methamphetamine here in the country is uh, no longer pure. Uh, when I say no longer pure, it means that uh, the, the substance has been economized and it has been mixed with a lot of um, uh, substances like uh, methamphetamine is being mixed with um, albatross, candle, fluorescent, and many more substances, which likely is causing uh, people to have um, uh, substance-induced psychosis, and uh, they are likely to have these effects for several months. They have um, psychotic um, symptoms for about two to three months, and uh, until, if they continue using, um, the, the problem might become inflexible or uh, the the problem continues to be permanent. Moving forward with narcotic analgesics, um, they also uh, pertain to the opiate or the opiate derivatives. Um, we mean uh, by this, uh, w um, most of these substances are actually, are, or all of these substances are coming from the opium puppy. Uh, which is a plant and um, these are also being processed and uh, the effect of the substance is actually it depresses some parts of the CNS 
and uh, it is used as a pain suppressant. So, like for example, if uh, if uh, a person undergoes um, an operation, so the the opiate derivatives are also being used, just like morphine, fentanyl, and nobane. So, nobane locally here in um, the country, uh, most of the People who in inject drugs are using nobane, and um, uh, they are pain suppressants. Um, people experience that um, calming effect when they are injecting uh, morphine, fentanyl, and nobane. Now, um, in Cebu, there has been this initiative. I think, if I'm not mistaken, from the uh, World Health Organization, uh, it was their step to also stop individuals from um, having HIV and other communicable diseases uh, wherein they get to give um, free syringes to people who have uh, been injecting drugs. But the problem was that um, local politics also uh, came into the picture and um, the the harm reduction um, movement of giving free syringes to peewid uh, or peewids um, have been stopped because it was perceived by people to be uh, tolerating drug use instead of um, doing harm reduction, uh, meaning they they want to stop the spread of hiv and other communicable diseases like uh tb and also hepatitis um hallucinogens uh they are also called psychedelics or the mind expanders as i have uh, mentioned this is talampunay or kachubong no um you can easily um see the uh, these plants actually in uh, Busay in, in Cebu and uh, they are considered to be recreational drugs and they provide hallucinatory experiences. When we speak of hallucinatory experiences that is when um, people would experience a time is or time has become um, time is experienced in a slow manner uh, people become powerful uh, and that's why they laugh and uh, they get to also have um, hallucinatory experiences. And uh, Talampunay or Kachubong is also called as the devil's or the angel's trumpet. Uh, other types, uh, the marijuana, uh, commonly known as MJ or leaf, grass, uh, joint, match, stick, J, and MJ. Uh, here in Cebu, uh, if you have heard uh, people calling it blue, uh, it actually started uh, with uh, the term blue. But here in Cebu, uh, we also utter um, words in uh, a harder way. And that's why uh, we have heard about the label blue, which is basically it is blow. Um, has hish uh, or resin. Um, it also came from the f- female genus of uh, of uh, marijuana, wherein um, the the content of uh, of marijuana would likely also be mixed with other substances. Some people bake it, and uh, that's what we call as has hish. Um, we also have um, sativa, indica, and rhodiralis. Um, mar- these are actually marijuana plants, and uh, they just uh, differ with uh, their leaf um, structure. Um, marijuana's effect in the CNS is very deceitful because when it is taken in uh, low doses, cannabis or marijuana is sedative by nature it is relaxing it uh, causes people to have um, that calming effect 
But when taken in um, large doses, uh, basically, it becomes a hallucinogen. Uh, inhalants, no? um, basically, it, it refers to the rugby, uh, the uh, vulcacil, nail polish, and the gasoline uh, that um, individuals or, or some people may be using. And uh, it is also quite alarming because uh, the fastest way to have the desired effects of the drug is through sniffing or bagging such as this. Uh, there is a broad range of household and industrial chemicals no, whose vapors are also uh, they are breath uh, they are breath no? uh, or uh, they are uh, yes uh, sniffed sorry not to produce um intoxication uh the stages of drug use include compulsive uh we may start with the very beginning uh, meaning it starts from experimental or recreational use um let's say people have just been uh curious about what uh, the drug is all about and its effect and and they have heard about it from friends and that's why they want to experiment. No? They have uh, become curious about it. And that's why they say that curiosity was actually uh, the first um, thing that came into mind. And that's why they wanted to use it. Uh, until it becomes casual or occasional to literally understand it. Meaning um, ev in every occasion like birthdays, annual fiestas, or uh, it could be that uh, it, it's December and... Uh, it's Christmas, and that's the time they get to use. No, uh, every time there is an occasion, and uh, it has become an occasional use. Um, or it could be like um, in every other month. No, and uh, intensive or regular, meaning to say there is already um, a certain time uh, time spent for. Uh, the person using like uh, it's a week a weekly basis uh, every paid day so there is that regular use until the problem becomes compulsive or it becomes addictive that every time the person wants to use then uh, the person uh, would actually do anything just to um, use the substance uh, the factors affecting substance effect uh, also include uh, the drug type so the different substances have also different effects on our um, brain and the CNS uh, there is also the route of administration I have also made mention that uh, people who have been sniffing um, solvents and, and the fumes no, of uh, inhalable uh, drugs uh such as the inhalants, uh, that's actually the fastest way to have the effect of the drug. It's actually because um, the olfactory nerves are very close to our brain. Um, the dosage or the rate of intake, um, we know for a fact that when taken in large doses, it also increases uh, our tolerance to the substance. Um, experience with the substance, meaning... Um, when, when people get to also associate certain events in their lives and when they are using the substance, they get to also uh, be searching for it. Now, especially when uh, they liked it, when they like the effects, when they use the substance. Age, um, gender, and weight you know, are also part of the factors affecting substance effect, no? Um, when you speak of um, age, the earlier the person has started using, like uh, at around age ten, uh, the more like it, uh, the more likely it is for the person to become uh, a poly drug user. Meaning, uh, the earlier you started using and abusing drugs, the more uh, risk it is you know, for the person to also explore other substances. In the future uh, gender if you speak about people uh, let's say uh, how many uh, if there are more men uh, using compared to women um, we say that 
there is an equal uh, substance use and abuse among men and women, especially in the country. Um, weight, uh, it doesn't really follow that people who have lost weight are basically um, using methamphetamine. Um, there are also people who have been using several substances and uh, weight is not actually um, an indicator. It's it's not just uh, a one indicator type for uh, substance use. Although for methamphetamine uh, chronic users, uh, they, they actually uh, lose weight and that's why people who are obese prefer using methamphetamine hydrochloride because uh, it would help them manage their weight. Uh, the drug interaction, uh, it also pertains to uh, the different effects of the substances in uh, the, the central nervous system. And we know for a fact that when uh, the drugs interact, like for example, a person uh, drinks alcohol at the same time, uses um, stimulants, uh, Alcohol per se is uh, a sedative hypnotic agent, meaning it is a depressant. And um, methamphetamine is a stimulant. Uh, so, meaning to say, there is drug interaction. Uh, the body couldn't actually be fooled. So, there is a portion in your body that is also being uh, soothed and being calmed by alcohol. And there are also regions in the body that are being um, stimulated by methamphetamine or shabu. Uh, what happens to the brain if uh, one keeps using drugs? Now, with a healthy brain, uh, th in, in this picture, you are seeing a red uh, area or region and this pertains to control. For a methamphetamine user, a shabu user, um, the red sections or portions are actually disappearing. Meaning, in this section of the midbrain, um, the midbrain is basically the area in the brain that tells you that uh, you are um, satiated, uh, you are full, you uh, you need to stop, no, you need to control. Uh, you need to gain control over yourself. Now, um, in, in this particular uh, illustration, it entails that a person who uses methamphetamine has lost also control over himself or herself. Um, addiction is like other diseases, like a medical problem. Uh, only uh, we say that it is a brain disease. Just like also having a heart problem. Uh, both disrupt the normal healthy functioning of the organ, have serious harmful consequences and are preventable and treatable, but if left untreated, in ca it can actually last for a lifetime. So this is the diseased brain and also the diseased heart. So we could say you know, that people who have substance use disorder are actually people having problems with their brain. And it could also be the same no, when people would be uh, considered not to be having heart problems. And that's why um, treatment, uh, going into um, an inpatient treatment is suitable than uh, killing uh, a person with SUD. Um, all the drugs of abuse target the brain's reward system as we have also uh, discussed earlier. And, and that is through flooding the circuit with dopamine. Our brains are wired to ensure that we will repeat life-sustaining activities by associating those activities with pleasure or reward. When the reward circuit is activated, the brain notes that something important is happening that needs to be remembered and teaches us to do it again and again without thinking about it. So uh, this is already affecting the midbrain of the person that instead of them, uh, instead of the midbrain telling that uh, you should stop because it's already dangerous for you, um, that function is already lost now with a person who has been 
into having that compulsion to use drugs. And because drugs of abuse stimulate the same circuit, we learn to abuse drugs in the same way. Um, the catalysts, meaning um, our or, or these are factors also that may um, that are also initially identified to be causing certain SUD problems. And uh, it would also be understood that uh, if we get to uh, get away from stress, to treat uh, trauma, to also help people in the poverty line, to be uh, instilling hope, and yes, no, to treat people, then it could also uh, hinder people from uh, having SUD problems. And these conditions can change the chemical balance in the brain no? and make people more vulnerable to addiction and to many other conditions. So again, no, we need to be uh, staying away from stress because many people, uh, uh, even if we say that uh, it's an alcohol, it's um, it's um, a stimulant, a uh, hallucinogen, or it could be in any type. The, f the first step of actually being addicted to a certain substance is um is that our desire to escape no people drink because they want to forget about their problem but um it's also illogical to also drink alcohol because as i said alcohol is a depressant it doesn't solve your problem no if you have a heartbreak um, if you have um, many frustrations, it doesn't actually solve or help you solve your problem because it would only make you uh, feel worse. No, because uh, when you drink, uh, as you can observe, people get to feel the pain and that's why they get to be expressive. No, the, there are no longer inhibitions in him or her and that's why they get to express about um, how they were hurt. Um, about their disappointment so they get to 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 share it but then again after uh, also being sober from uh, drinking liquor they get to also uh, feel the same pain once again and uh, that is also quite uh, tricky and and it's a serious problem people get to be addicted to alcohol and and alcohol in our country is very much legal and then that is actually considered as a gateway drug opening its doors to the different um, usage of the different substances also you know, having a mental illness particularly one that is not being treated facilitates addiction too not just like uh, anxiety depression and and even trauma and it may also entail that the person already has a comorbid problem. Because aside from having anxiety, a person may also have a problem with SUD. So there are already two problems. Or if a person has depression and then uh, he also has an addiction, then there are two problems in the picture. And, and these two problems must also be addressed. Um, recovery is the answer. So if we are to ask how do we stop or help these individuals from uh, the ill effects of the substance, if you can observe, um, the red section pertains to control. And right now, if you are seeing uh, this illustration, uh, with 14 months of abstinence or being sober, by not taking in any substance. The regions of the brain where control is present is likely to also be back. It's like forming that um, region in the brain. 